We had another question. Um, any suggestions on how to engage a 16 year old in school? He used to leave the classroom with his head down for the whole period. And when he, when he does not want to participate, um, he has not returned to school since the pandemic and is coming back in the fall. It's a great question. Um, I mean, I mean I, exact stuff. Shana, if you want to take that. Thanks. Give me the hard ones. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> um, I think right now dealing with the pandemic um, has been really tough on everyone, you know, teachers and students alike. Um, you know, a lot of students, you know, don't turn their video on, um, you know, high school kids, kids with ASD, kids without ASD, like, you know, the engagement is a lot lower online than it is in the classroom for the most part. I've actually heard some success stories whereby, you know, certain kiddos um, who have social, um, social anxiety actually do really, really well online because the online piece takes away that social anxiety. And then they've, you know, had friends that they've met online basically and been able to then hang out with because the social anxiety was gone when they developed that friendship, which I thought was super cool. But anyway, back to the question, um, you know, it's been tough, you know, COVID's been tough for everyone. And, you know, the lack of engagement, the lack of engagement, you know, online, and then the lack of engagement coming back to school after online was over. Um, it kind of, you know, I, I think you just have to go, you know, it is what it is. And I feel like I'm giving up when I say that. Um, but sometimes we can't take it all on. You know, somebody said to me one time, and it was awesome. They said, you know, Shana, you can't bat a 1000 all the time. You know, you look at baseball, I'm, I don't really follow baseball that much. But you know, like people's batting averages are like, I don't know, 300. That's a really good batting average, right. And I think that 300 score is out of 1000. It's not even out of 500. Maybe it is out of 500. But the point is, is you can't be perfect all the time. So you know, there might be a few kids right now who are falling through the cracks, because you can't get to them for whatever reason, the guy's not even attending school, like there's not much you can do about that. Um, I think the biggest thing you can do is reach out to the family and just provide that support like hey just thinking about you how you doing or you know we worked on you know these really cool things today you know just show show your son pictures of this etc or if you've got you know the client's direct email or the student's direct email hey you know just just letting you know try and stay in touch here's some things we worked on today um without giving assignments or anything like that so it's almost like pairing yourself again with reinforcement right not asking questions don't put any demands on just hey just keeping you informed here's what we did today and that's really so all my, I can do. My question would be, are you involved on the school side or on the family side? Like, are you helping the family get this student to the school or are you on the school side that when he gets to you, now he's, you know, yours to deal with? Um, and then my next question based on that would be, is it an option to have, so you're on the school side, okay. So it is, is it an option to have um, like a transition plan put in place where he can attend for either it's the most preferred activities whether that's gym or recess or things like that or you could just come for an hour and then leave and kind of you know reinforce smaller approximations of that behavior before he comes back for a full day um is that something that's an option um it's something i've i've done before with kids if the parents are on board and the school's on board um you know just starting small and making them successful and you're saying that's not an option okay then plan b would be to um so even within the school is there something else that he could do that he's successful with if it's not the classroom um and then shaping up his attendance in the classroom so could he be given other jobs could he be an assistant could he be in the gym or the cafeteria or things like that and shaping up his attendance in a classroom um or the requirements of a classroom i guess my, my thought is start with something he's successful with whatever that looks like if you can make him successful and offer reinforcement for successes um as opposed to coming up with like you know strict behavioral contingencies and rules and punishments and rewards and consequences um i find that with teenagers it's it's much harder to enforce those rules um but if you can start small and make them successful then ultimately we want them to want to be there. Like there's only so much control you can have over a teenager who controls themselves. Like you're not gonna make them attend. Um, so if there's some creative way to put small, um, like small rules and small expectations so that he could be successful in small ways and then grow from there. Yeah, it's hard. I know like something like maybe, um, 
the level system, if that's an option. I know that, that they do that a lot in, in some schools where it's like at a certain level, which may require you know attendance 20% of the time, you have access to these privileges. Are you familiar with the level system? Um, and so as long as he's coming 20% of the time or however you define that, attending 20% of the time, then he gets certain privileges and then he can move up to level two, which might be attending 40% of the time and then you get access to these privileges. So something like that might be, but that's still, you know, starting small, start small where he's successful and offer their incentives to, to move up. Um, and then, you know, the ultimate level would be, you know, whatever, whatever requirement it is to be there.